So Axler is a decentralized overlay network that securely connects users, assets, and applications to deliver Web3 interoperability. On a high level, the network is a decentralized proof-of-stake network that's secured by validators. And so what validators do is they collectively run a cross-chain gateway protocol. The way that it works is as follows. Validators collectively monitor gateway accounts on different chains. Okay. As information needs to go from one ecosystem to another, it's delivered to one of these gateway accounts. Then the validators collectively observe it, reach a consensus on what the corresponding decision or message that needs to be posted on the destination chain is. They execute that message and it can be then relayed and posted on the destination chain. So that's what allows us to compose and move messages and information from one ecosystem to the other. So over the last year, we spent most of the time building the core technology, right? So the network has been live on the testnet environment uh, for most of the last year. We had uh, close to 100 validators that participate in the testnet environments, uh, hundreds of developers that build uh, various uh, tools or applications around the platform and learn how to leverage this new uh, cross-chain stack that we're building. And more recently, we announced that we're beginning the rollout of our main network. So what that technically means is that, A, we're onboarding new validators, and we have amazing validators like Chorus, Figment, and many others that are participating in the ecosystem. We are enabling functionality that allows simple cross-chain flows to go through the network. At the same time, we also started to work with application developers to integrate the assets or the functionality that we're building in their front ends. As an example, uh, Pangolin is uh, at DEX on Avalanche that uh, already saw a lot of liquidity being moved from Terra uh, in the form of UST, and it's now actually the second largest asset on Pangolin um, and the main stable coin that they're going to be transacting with uh, going forward. And additionally, we're actually building a set of microservices around the network that's pretty foundational that allow developers to easier interact across of these ecosystems. So, let me give you one example. So as a developer, um, you want to be able to perform a transaction in a send and forget mode, what I call, right? So you send a message to a specific gateway account or a contract on a source chain, and you don't want to do anything else. You want this transaction to be executed on the destination chain. But there are a lot of things that have to happen besides just the core protocol and network to facilitate this. The transaction needs to be relayed from one network to the other. Transaction fees have to be paid. Transaction needs to be finalized and relayed on another chain, and so on and so forth. And so we're building a stack of microservices and SDKs on top of the network to make this experience for the developers as smooth as possible. We have opened up a satellite, which is a demo application built on top of the Axel network that allows users to move their assets from ecosystems like Terra, Avalanche, Ethereum, you know, Polygon, to one another. So Satellite has been getting a lot of usage, right? I think the application's been live for a little over a month, but we already have close to 40 million of total value locked at the network. We are processing anywhere from five to 10,000 transactions per day. Um, and uh, thousands of users have tried the application. So um, it's only now available for a handful of assets and a handful of ecosystems, and so I'm super excited to, to see what's ahead. So we've built a number of amazing tools and services around the ecosystem, right? Just to give you a couple of examples, so AxelarScan.io is a fantastic dashboard and explorer of the Axelar ecosystem, right? So you can see on it things like the traffic that goes from one network to the other. You can see the number of transactions that the network has processed. You can see the connections from one ecosystem to the other. But also importantly, we're building tools to allow users to see the flow of their, uh, of their assets, right? So as an example, you can take your address, you can put it in this, um, in this dashboard, and you actually get a history of all the transactions that you ever executed, what step they're at, if they're still being pended in the process, and so on and so forth. So there will be two ways to interact with the network. One, you can come in and build on top of the actual network uh, directly in order to help you facilitate these cross-chain flows. Right? So as an example, you can uh, generate what we call as a link path from a source account on a source chain to a destination account on the destination chain. And assuming the assets arrive at the source chain, then the rest of the services and network will help you facilitate it and execute it on the destination chain. So that's one way to do the things. 
But the second way is that as a developer, you'll be able to interact through our APIs directly with the gateways on the source chains of, the inf of where the information is originated from. Right? So think about it like this. You're building an application in your favorite environment, in your favorite ecosystem. And then by using a simple API that we expose to you, you can compose and interact with other blockchains. And this API, on a very high level, just allows you to interact with the actual gateway, which you can think of it as, an, as a router that um, will help you compose with other ecosystems. Some of the early partners that I'm very excited about are um, you know, Terra and Avalanche, as an example. Right? So I think um, Terra is building an amazing product. For those of you not familiar, um, one of the core products is a decentralized stablecoin, UST. And we're helping them to deliver this stablecoin across different ecosystems. And the only way to deliver a decentralized stablecoin is through a decentralized stack. Um, and at the same time, you know, stablecoins are fundamentally needed in order to continue driving and growing these different blockchains. So pretty excited to continue working with them and, and help them um, spread UST across different ecosystems. And so far, we've seen a lot of demand from Avalanche, as an example, that um, you know, has a new ecosystem, has a growing user base and developer base. And you know, they're pretty excited about decentralized aspects of both UST and Axler in parallel. In order to facilitate it, uh, A, we have to build you know, the right stack. And what, what our stack allows us to do is continue scaling horizontally. So that means really two things. A, our validators and all the features that they're performing can be uh, fine-tuned as the network continues to grow. So meaning that one validator can perform certain operations on the network, a different validator can perform other operations in the network, and collectively through the consensus mechanism, they can you know, agree on a decision that needs to be taken. Right? So you can continue uh, kind of horizontally compartmentalizing the roles of validators in the ecosystem as the network grows more and more. But two, because the way we build the stack, it's actually easier for us to spin up other versions of Axel network that potentially optimize for specific ecosystems or specific asset flows. The more I actually understood about the space, the more I played with the different technologies, the more I understood the use cases, the more it became sort of personal in some sense to me, right? And the more I understood the value of it. I don't think I could honestly say that I grasped all the potential that this technology could do. Like at the end of my grad school, I was sort of living in a, in a, in a theoretical technology bubble, right, in some sense. But I think as we continue to build in, as I continue, you know, playing in the ecosystem, um, that all changed.